YouTube. Uh, so, sorry I didn't put a, a, a Trade Tuesday um, episode this week. It was my, it was my plan, um, but I didn't actually. I kind of screwed myself up a little bit with um, doing the Sunday night live stream thing because that was when I always used to put things up for sale. Uh, so <laughs> next time I need to I need to work my way around that somehow. Uh, I've got rid of the wee um, the encore. It lasted a day. Um, it didn't sell that. It didn't sell as quickly as my guitars normally do, but that's because I I stupidly posted it during the day. There's quite a lot of things going on. Oh wow, there's a whole new housing complex here which wasn't here before. I've never seen them before. Okay, yep. Uh, so I'm going to a place called Moody's Burn today, which is not far away. And it's taken the Google Maps sent me along this um, cross country route, which will be fun. I used to. This is where I used to come up on my bike when I was like when I had my Rally Massif mountain bike. That'd be like 20, 20, nearly 30 years ago. Um, this is where me and my pal used to come, come on our bikes. It's not far away from oh, Glensey. Um, I've just passed a house where I met Alex Ferguson, who I didn't really know who it was. I did sort of half recognise him. One time I was delivering for the Sam, the local Chinese um, takeaway place. And uh, I, I went just, you know, just, I, as, as usual, delivered a Chinese, and um, when I went back, Sam's like, ah, so, so, and I was like, uh, what? Was that, did you not recognise who it was that paid, it, paid for it? And I was like, um, I think I'll kind of look a bit familiar. Was that, and apparently Alex Ferguson's brother lives just there, and he was up having a, up seeing his brother. <laughs> so, and it was, it was Alex Ferguson that answered the door and paid for the dinner. <laughs> so, I, don't, I, can't, I, can't, I didn't get a particularly huge tip. It wasn't, it wasn't a notable one, maybe a pound or something like that. Um, I'd imagine I would have noticed if it was like a hundred quid tip, but it wasn't. So I'm out in the countryside doing a wee bit of a cross country route here. I remember, the, I remember this area. Um, it's quite good because you get a wee country road that you know from 30 years ago, therefore I can drive at a proper speed rather than running. But this hill was always a pig to cycle up, but amazing for cycling down. Oh. I remember my, my car battery went flat here one time as well. I suppose I should... It's not as nice today, but there we go. This is, so this is, that's Cumbernauld, that's the Iron Brew Factory over there. Or, if it's not the Iron Brew Factory, the, the factory that's next to it is the Iron Brew Factory. And then there's the captures over there, and then there's uh, other things. Yeah, so I was just looking on Facebook Marketplace, and there was a guy selling a left-handed Jim Deacon Stratocaster, and I really like that Jim Deacon I've got just now. So I thought, I'll take that. Uh, I've got a little bit of a cunning plan with that. Um, I might not be selling it. Um, the guy, Tony and Blitzkrieg, sent me a picture before of a... Uh, he had a Buckfaster caster before he met me, he managed to find one, like a, one that I'd already previously sold, he was never quick enough to actually catch one. Um, and he, he bought one off that someone else had bought and then sold it six months later. And he sent me a picture of, look at this, and it was a guy playing the Bucky caster. I was like, oh yeah, it's a guy, and it's a guy, the singer from, or the main guy from Las Vegas, which is a band I didn't really know, still didn't really know. I looked, I looked him up, I googled, uh, I googled them and apparently they had a, a number one album that, I don't know, about 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, that uh, kept Metallica from the number one spot. So it was like, no, we've got, we've got a big band. So that guy played a uh, Bucky Caster, but he's um, left-handed. So I've been sort of half looking for a left-handed guitar since then, and I think I might uh, just do some sort of deal and for promo reasons, you know, maybe just give it. Paint, bu buckify it, and then just give it to this, this dude, and then maybe get a photo of it. <laughs> as, as, as payment, I'll get a photo of you, know, take a photo of it when he's playing it, and it'll be like, yeah! So my one, another mighty endorsement. I still haven't asked, I keep meaning to ask Jesse to take a photo with my Claymore bass that I gave him. So I can have that as a, a Mad Malco poster as well. Um, 
yeah. Alright, so I, I, as I said, I, sorry, I fell asleep on Tuesday night. Um, I did I did a couple of videos during the day to sell the. So I, I didn't go a day without putting a video out, but I did another video because I, I realised that the editing of the one last night, or not the editing, the uploading wasn't going to be in time to make the seven o'clock, my self-imposed seven o'clock deadline, I just thought I saw it. And I did another one where I removed the sticker from that Encore guitar, so there's a 10 minute video of me peeling a sticker off, and uh, I thought I'd uploaded it and fell asleep. Uh, no, I uploaded it, but I didn't make it, I didn't publish it. Um, so I'll probably stitch that onto the end of this, uh, just to try and pad this video out a little bit. Um, I was looking at a PV nano valve amp, there was two of them for sale and, uh, on Gumtree, one was in, uh, on Facebook, one of them was in Greenock and I thought, oh, Greenock's just a bit far away. And then there was another one in Glasgow which was a tenner cheaper, which was closer and I thought, right, and I was going to buy it yesterday and I thought, no, I'll wait till today, see what's going on and um, it sold yesterday, that's really pretty annoying. Just when I was playing that Epiphone Valve Junior the other day, I thought, it's really pretty good and PV Nano Valve is basically the same sort of idea, you know, one knob, eight inch speaker, valve amp. Um, this one has an external speaker socket fitted to it, but I can quite easily fit an external speaker socket if it comes to it. But I'm just kind of winging it here. Is my sat nav even turned on? Nah, it's, it's turned on, but it's not it's a signal. I'm sure it said something about a roundabout um, when I looked up Google Maps. So I've got to try and catch this guy before he goes out half two. I think I've got about ten minutes leeway. Um, so, left-handed Bucky Strat coming up, I think. At least that's the plan. I don't know what I'll do switchy-wise. So I keep trying to do different things with the... I've never made two Bucky casters the same, so I'm going to try and maintain that. But because it's a left-handed one, I really don't have to do anything. Because I don't think there is a left-handed Bucky caster. There is a left-handed Bucky caster that's the shape of a mockingbird out there. And I think... I think I made a left-handed one before and I couldn't sell it so I eventually I just basically strung it upside down and I think somebody bought it as an upside down guitar um, which is fine uh, but this one whether I actually sell it or just give it to this dude from Las Vegas who knows maybe put slightly more expensive pickups in it or something like that right it was back or something road Drive. That sounds close enough to being back on something road. That's me here. Okay, I shall catch you later. Hey, that didn't, that didn't take very long. It's quite good. You, you find guitars that are quite close by. Um, looks pretty good. It's very dirty. <laughs> but the guy threw it in a bag, so that makes up for it. I will be cleaning it and then um, buckifying it anyway. But, uh, yeah, so it actually looks pretty good. It kind of looks almost like the same sort of level as that, uh, the second 25 sound coil adder guitar, the mini Jim Deacon. So it's got like plus and stout, stout tuners on it. Actually quite cool. Not really going to see much about it. Um, it's black. <laughs> and manky. Um, so the joys of setting up a left-handed guitar because I can't play it to check it you know it's, um, so I, I can set it up as far as I can and then try and play some upside down chords but really don't have them um, so the demo video for it might not be particularly good <laughs> when I was at the, um, down at Ali's playing through that Epiphone Valve Junior the guy in his punk band I don't think I mentioned this uh, the guy in Ali's other band was over playing through it I was like, yeah, it needs a pedal. So it sounded pure crap, and then, oops, uh, I need to ch change the monetary setting there because I just swore. Um, even though I'm not, I mean, if you look at Google at uh, the YouTube automatic subtitles, I, for, I haven't mentioned that for a while. If you look up the subtitles, then they're hilarious because they just don't understand me at all. So I mean. How, how, they, how do they check these things? They get all the words wrong, so it wouldn't surprise me if they put in incredibly bad swear words instead of 
normal words. Um, yeah, I was just saying, aye, so it, Ali's up here, yeah, it's, the amp sounded pure atrocious, and then his, his other guitarist put his pedal into it, he said it sounded alright. And then I was like, alright, okay, so I just stuck my guitar straight in, and Ali was like, how did you do that? I, was like, <laughs> I just told him it was because I had a Japanese guitar and they're better, but I mean, I think an, an element of it's just the way I play. I'm used to using that sort of sound, if you're used to using tons of gain, then the sound that I start off with probably isn't really what you want. I'm kind of more old school, you know, all, all my favourite music, or most of my favourite music comes from an era when you didn't really get pedals or distortion that's meant to be there. So I think it was just a case of just the way you play the guitar. So I think there's quite a lot in the fingers to get a good sound out of Valve Amp. Um, and I definitely see that, I mean, I, I am a Valve, a Valve Amp snob, but that's because that's what I'm used to. I think if you're not used to Valve Amps, they maybe don't, you know, they don't maybe don't sound immediately absolutely amazing. Is this the junction I want to take? Is this that the one I came in on? It kind of looks like it, I think so. Oops. Yeah, this is looking right. Yep, yeah, so back home. That was a really short video. It's taken even less time since I'm, I'm talking to you a lot while I'm doing this. This was another hill that was great fun for the bike. I put a new motorway in so the hill's not as deep as it used to be. They turned it into a bridge. Yeah, so I spent all day yesterday. I wonder, I was going to be today's video, but this might be today's video with the thing they stuck on. It's Thursday night's never a big night for getting views, so I might just stick this up and then stitch on the end that be picking off a sticker off a guitar. Or do I have the picking a sticker off a guitar as a set, as its own video? Because people might be quite interested in that, because it's one of those things that people get wrong. I've seen it so many times buying a, a guitar that's had stickers on it, and somebody's they said to try and remove the stickers with a chisel, but obviously they've scratched the the, coat, the, the poly on the guitar ridiculously. But now I've got my um, uh, I when I go home I'll do a video for the on the vulture base. That's what I spent on all day yesterday. I found um, in the garage I found some scratch remover sort of tea cutty stuff, tur turtle wax repair restorative polish or something like that it's called. And I went to town on the the vulture and it's looking great. I was always a bit disappointed with that guitar. I'll talk about it in the video when I do it though. Um, rather than talking about it just now. Mmm, hungry. I might, have to, I might have to take a wee slight di diversion through a past little past some sort of supermarket and get myself some food. If it wasn't so bendy here, I would have showed you the Bing, which is a big slag heap from something to do with excavating uh, coal, the stuff that's left over. Um, right, we used to, the band, the Blind Dog, used to have a studio right at the bottom of the Bing in the old mine pit working bit. And we used to go up the Bing occasionally. I've actually taken my Land Rover up to the top of the Bing before. I, th I think it's probably too far away. Over there, I don't know if you can see it. Um, that slag heap. I'm having my life over there. <laughs> that was fun. I reversed up <laughs> so, that, so that I didn't have to do a three point turn at the top or reverse down. I thought it was sensible at the time. Although, how sensible it was going up the thing in a Land Rover, really. I don't think you can still get to it. The fence was broken or something like that. Or something at the time. Anyhow, rockin', catch you back to this. Hey YouTube, I'm back. What's in the bag? You kind of know what's in the bag, so just assuming I've stitched this onto the correct video. So this is... I wonder if I can... I can just like, actually stick that through the washing machine, actually. Gig bags are always good. Don't ever throw them away. Yeah, so... Supplied by Magnum Services. I used to see that all the time on H&H &H Amps. So... Jim Deconstruct, I don't want to that has touched my, my clean jeans. It's pretty manky. But, um, yeah, so 
soon to be left handed bucket caster. I wondered what this was in the um in the picture. Some sort of crazy bridge because in the photo it looks like that and I wondered if it's a crazy bridge but it's got three wee stickers that tell you how to tune the strings. I was going to say they're they're written on the wrong way round but they're not because obviously this is strung upside down. Um but as I said this looks pretty good. Um it's got a nice glossy neck on it. The neck is straight, which I did check, or it's not um, it's not twisted. The action doesn't look too bad. The strings are on the wrong way round, and it's got Clusson tuners on it. The ones, yep, the ones that have got the, the wee hole at the top to stick the end of the string in, so they're less likely to stab you. So this is a, oh, it's got a name. Jim Deacon Guitar Company Limited, M-S-T-L. So M for something, ST for Strat, and L for left-handed, I would be thinking. Looks a bit right. Um, even if this doesn't work as a, a lefty, I'm sure I could make it a righty. So, there might not be enough room. It's one of those things that you just kind of think, it'd be pretty cool. And basically, see if I just put a Telecaster plate on there. With a five-way switch of volume and a tone, it would kind of be enough. I wonder if I should do that. I need to see whether I actually want this to be. A lefty or not um it's not difficult to turn it around the nut kind of looks all right to be honest yeah so incredibly dirty like if i can get the angle right it's like it's like it's like the bag is manky and the guitar is manky if only the guitar had been kept in the bag it probably wouldn't be quite as dirty as it was so there we go so Jim Deacon Strat, I do actually think I've got a, I think I've got a white left handed scratch plate so it could be white but I mean once I've cleaned it up there's a few there's a few bald bits, chunks out it and stuff like that so painting it bucky colours is probably a good idea regardless of whether it ends up being a lefty or a righty so rock on